Hello again. I'm back with another story for you today. Today we are going to follow the Lord Jesus and his disciples back again to the other side to Galilee. So you'll remember that yesterday we talked about a miracle that the Lord Jesus did on the other side of the Sea of Galilee with two men who were living in tombs who had devils living in them and the Lord Jesus took the devils, told the devils to go out of those men and into a herd of pigs. And the pigs, they ran wildly, they ran violently down a steep cliff into the Sea of Galilee and drowned. Now today, we're again back on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. So we see this ship where the Lord Jesus and his disciples are in. They come to the land, to the shore, and as soon as the people they see the Lord Jesus' ship way in the distance. They see his ship coming. They already start coming to the beach. As soon as Lord Jesus has gotten off of his boat with his disciples, people all start crowding around the Lord Jesus. By now, the Lord Jesus was quite famous, and people, they knew a lot about the miracles and wonders that he had done. They wanted to hear him talk. They wanted to see what else maybe the Lord Jesus could do. Now, as all of these people are crowding around the Lord Jesus, here comes a man running. He was the leader of a synagogue of the Jews. So he was a leader in a church. He took care of the Jewish synagogue. He didn't preach. He wasn't the minister, but he took care. He got everything ready for when it was time for church. So this leader of the synagogue, he comes to Jesus and he kneels down. He goes down in front of the Lord Jesus and he said, Lord, can you help me? I am very, very desperate. I have a 12-year-old daughter, and she is very sick. So sick that she is almost going to die. So this man, Jairus, he was desperate, desperate for the help of the Lord Jesus. So what does the Lord Jesus do? He starts walking with this man, Jairus. As he is walking with Jairus, suddenly the Lord Jesus stops. He turns around. He says, who touched me? Now his disciples, they say, Lord, are you really saying who touched me? Look at all these people crowding around you. Everybody is touching you. The Lord Jesus knew something else had happened. The Lord Jesus felt something change. As the Lord Jesus looks around, here's a woman. She comes and lays down right in front of Lord Jesus on her knees, and she's scared. She's trembling and shaking. She says, Lord, it was me who touched you. I have been sick for such a very, very long time. I've been bleeding. I've had a wound. Something was bleeding for so very long. I've been to doctors. I've been to all sorts of healers, and I don't have much money left. I just touched the very bottom of your coat, the very bottom of your garment, and I knew that that could heal me. You'll remember, right, people in the Bible times, they didn't wear clothes like we were today. They wore longer skirts and dresses and coats, robes, right? That almost reached the ground. So this lady, she had come to the Lord Jesus. She had touched the very, very bottom of his coat. And now she's explaining to Lord Jesus, it was me. Lord Jesus, he looks at her. Lord Jesus, he cared so much for everybody who came to him for healing, right? Lord Jesus, he looks at this woman. And he said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. You may go in peace. Don't worry, go home in peace. Now suddenly in the distance, again, somebody else comes running. Who's that? Well, he starts shouting already as he comes closer to the people. He says, Jairus, don't bother Jesus anymore. Your daughter, she's dead. Just leave Jesus alone. There's nothing that he can do anymore. The Lord Jesus also hears this message. What does the Lord Jesus do? Does he say, oh, well, that's it? No. The Lord Jesus, he continues walking to Jairus' house. As he continues walking to Jairus' house, he looks at the crowd around him. He says, I want you all to stay back. Nobody is allowed to follow me. I only want three of my disciples to follow me. Do you know, you think you can guess who those three disciples were? Three disciples that the Lord Jesus also chose to go with him on the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter, 
James, and John. Peter, James, and John, they went with the Lord Jesus to the house of Jairus. Now, as they are coming closer to the house of Jairus, they hear a racket, a lot of noise. There are a lot of women around the house weeping and wailing and crying loudly. That's what they did in Israel. When somebody passed away, they would even hire people to make a lot of noise, lots of crying noises in front of the house of the person who died so that everybody would know that in this house, somebody had died. So as Jesus is coming to this house, he says to these people who are crying so loudly and making all the noise, he says, why are you crying like this? The little girl, she's not dead. She's only sleeping. Now, when the people heard that, they laughed at Jesus. Who did he think he was? How could he say this girl was only sleeping? Lord Jesus, he walks into the house and he only lets the mom and the dad of the little girl come with him and Peter, James, and John. And with them, he walks into the room where this little girl was laying. Now she was obviously dead, but why did the Lord Jesus then say she was sleeping? He wanted to show the people something. He sat down by the girl he picked up her hand and he said to her, Talitha Kumi. With that, he meant to say, Daughter, arise. Little girl, you may get up. And as soon as Jesus had said that, she stood up and walked, it says in the Bible. She didn't have to stay a day in bed yet to get better. No, nope. she got up and she walked. Now when all the people outside of the house had heard that little, the little girl, Jairus' daughter, was healed, they were again amazed and astonished. The Lord Jesus wasn't finished, though. He said to the people, You may not tell everybody about this. We talked about this a while back, right? Sometimes the Lord Jesus told people not to share the news because he wanted them to believe what he was saying and not only to believe on him because of his miracles. He says, don't tell everybody about this. Then he looked at her family and he said to her family, why don't you give her something to eat? Give this girl something to eat. She needs some of her energy back again. Now, why did Jesus say she was sleeping? He wanted to prove to the people that it was just as easy for him to raise someone from the dead as it was to wake somebody up who was sleeping. It's just like the Lord Jesus was just waking up somebody who was sleeping. Just like your mom might come to you and wake you up in the morning. That's how easy it was for the Lord Jesus also to raise someone, make someone alive who was dead. All right, so in your writing for today, you'll focus on the raising of Jairus' daughter. Right, how that first Jairus came to Jesus, his daughter was sick. The Lord Jesus got busy doing another miracle. He was helping another lady. In the meantime, Little, the little girl, little Jairus' daughter, she had died. But Jesus still went to the house. And he told Jairus and all the people around the house, don't worry, she's just sleeping. Right? He walked into the house, he picked up her hand, and he said, Talitha Komi, which means daughter, arise. Little girl, you may get up now. And sure enough, she woke up from the dead, and the Lord Jesus told her family to take care of her. In your writing for today, I would like you to use the words Jairus, faith. Jairus had a lot of faith, right? He believed Lord Jesus could heal his daughter. Raised, touched, healed, asleep, and daughter. Now, some of you are finding that even if you don't skip lines, there still is not enough room to write all of your work. So what you can do is you can just flip to the back of your work page where there's just a blank side and continue writing. Some of you are doing that already because there's just so much to write. That's awesome. So keep up your good work. When you're finished writing, make sure to check your capitals, periods, that it's neatly done. They didn't forget words, right? Your pictures are coming through very nicely as well. Don't forget to caption your picture. Underneath the picture, write down what you drew. And I look forward to seeing more of your writing. Keep it up, boys and girls.